Once you've created your homepage and your dashboard in Notion, and you've got loads of databases set up, using formulas can actually be a really helpful way in filtering through all of that information and just bringing to the surface what you actually need to know. Hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. Formulas do sound scary when you first think about them in Notion, and they don't really work the same as they do in Excel. So going over the basics in formulas really helped me understand how I can use formulas to boost up my workspace. In this video, I'm going to go right from scratch, so if you know nothing about formulas, this is where to start. Formulas are actually part of databases, so you will need a database if you're going to use any sort of formula. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use numbers because they're the simplest way to go over most of the basic functions of formulas. So as you can see on screen, I now have a table with a name, which I'm not really going to use, two number properties, and then a formula property, which is where we're going to be working. So before you do anything with formulas, you will see this formula box. It will look pretty much the same every time you enter any formula. The only difference will be the properties that are shown. The properties that are shown are the ones that are in the database that you're trying to put the formula in. So you can see name, number one, and number two, because they are the three properties we have in our database outside of the formula property that we're currently in. Then as you scroll down, we have some constants which you can use in formulas. Then we have the list of all the operators, and what this list basically does is show you all of the different operators that Notion offers when you're trying to work with formulas. And as you can see, at the side of each of the operators and all of the constants, you have different icons. And these icons represent what information those functions deal with. So if is related to text, add, subtract, multiply, etc. All of those hashtags icons, that's numbers. And then all the tick boxes are labeled as booleans, which is basically whether it's true or false. Then as we scroll down past the operators, you can see functions, and everything in this sidebar menu will have an explanation in that main panel window. So you'll have the explanation, you'll have the syntax, which is how it's written, and then you'll have an example of how it could be used. So to start with, the simplest way of using formulas is just using mathematical signs. So one add one equals two. So you can put that in the formula box. Push done, and that formula will go through every single row. If you change the sign, you change the formula. So minus one minus one is zero. One times one is one. If you change the number, you change the formula. So you change the output. One divided by two, which is a half. But as you can see, this formula repeats itself all the way down. If we want to change those numbers, we need to change the formula. So instead of manually inputting those numbers, we're going to select the property. So prop stands for property. Number one is the name of that property. So this means it's always going to reference the number one property. Then we're going to add the number one property to the number two property. So now what the formula is doing is working in rows. So it's looking at number one, adding number two, and that's the answer in the formula column. So we've got one add four is five, two add five is seven, three add seven is 10. And the same thing applies. So if we change that plus to a minus, it will do that calculation for everything. And you can do this for as many different numbers as you want. So the minus, the plus, the times, the divide, that is the function, that's the order. That's what we're asking the formula to do. Then the prop number one and prop number two are the arguments we're asking the function to work with. So we've got the function that is ordering the arguments around. So when looking at the formula in a different way, now we've got add as a word, as the function, and we've still got the same two properties, but they're displayed in a different way. Because it's displayed in a different way, the syntax is slightly different, and the syntax is basically the punctuation of the formula. When writing sentences, you put commas and full stops at the end and in the middle to make breaks. Well, in formulas, you use brackets to close things off and brackets to start things. You use commas to separate different arguments and speech marks to show different strings of information. Strings are basically more than one thing together. So in this syntax, we have the function add, argument property number one, argument property number two, and closing the brackets to finish off the add function so the syntax is correct. So if we take away that bracket, the syntax is now wrong because the punctuation isn't correct. And as you can see, at the bottom of the formula box, it's telling us that there is an error. Parentheses, bracket, is expected at character 38. When we put that bracket in, it now allows us to put that formula in. 
Essentially, we're just adding the two numbers together, it's just written a little bit differently. And when you start playing around with the different formulas, you've got subtract, multiply, divide, and then some of the other ones in there, and they do show examples at the side, like I said earlier, so you can play around and learn how all the formulas work. Most of the operators are maths orientated because they all focus on numbers, so if you like maths or work with money or work with numbers quite a lot, these formulas can be quite useful and the operators can help you manipulate the numbers or calculate things that you may want to know. Now we've covered most of the terminology used in formulas, I'm going to show you booleans. No I didn't make that word up, that word comes from Notion and their formula debrief, but essentially it checks whether something is true or false. So if we write in those two arguments, property number one and property number two, and put equals twice in between them, that is the boolean. What it's doing is checking whether that is true. So is argument number one equal to argument number two? What this does is in the formula box it puts a checkbox whether it is true or false. If it's true, it will put a tick. If it's false, it will stay empty. So you can see 4 is the same as 4, so it's ticked. 2 is not the same as 5, and 3 is not the same as 7. You can then alter the function by asking whether it's smaller than or equal to. So now we're asking if number 1 is smaller than or equal to number 2. And in this case, number 4 is equal to, so it's ticked. And 2 is smaller than 5, and 3 is smaller than 7. But if we change that 3 to 8, 8 is now bigger than 7, so it's not true, which means the boolean is false, so the formula is not ticked. And of course you can change that round to say it's bigger than or equal to. Now 8 is bigger than 7, so it's ticked. 2 is smaller than 5, so it's not ticked. And 4 and 4 are still equal, so that is still ticked. I use formulas on a daily basis in my reoccurring tasks, and if that's something you're interested to learn about, check out this video over here. I'll see you there.